but like, I don't really like a lot of these ones, and this one's just quite forgettable, but we'll get it out of the way now, as I'm just rambling about stupid things. Oh yeah, I unlocked the new sticker, let's play with the new, oh wow, such a big difference. Um, and she got a new skin, so I'm not used to know. She's pink now. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we were talking about that, and like, um, yeah, man, school, school is weird, like, I was saying last, last kind of, I guess it will be episode now, um, my teachers didn't really know, like, what was the right thing to say, and I think they thought that a lot of stuff just went, blew over kids' heads, and it was like, I remember some of that stuff, all the way back, oh, he's got rainbow wheels, I want those, that's cool, I haven't got any of the, uh, trail after effect wheels, and they look really cool, but they're super expensive, also this, this character's barks, if you've been listening to them, they're like, uh, flavoured text, like, <laughs> um, she's just gonna like vroom vroom, I go fast now, and it's just like, okay. <laughs> the other trophy girls have like slightly more varied stuff. So she seems mostly just being like, ha ha ha, I drop a thing, vroom vroom, I go fast, so it's a bit like, I guess if she didn't have much of a character before, it makes it harder. Shortcut. Hooliganism. Yeah, so like teachers like took my parents to one side at some point because I have this kind of thing where I am actually really like I pick up a lot of learning stuff really quickly, but like I like kind of like you know Rick and Rick and Morty seems to be like really intelligent, but only if he's focused on stuff. Like so, if he doesn't give a shit about something, he just doesn't know anything about it. And it's like what they said Sherlock Holmes was like in the books originally. Where it's like, he knows literally nothing outside of his field of expertise. My learning style is like that, and they were very confused. He's like, oh, we were doing about ancient Egypt, and he's like, read books that kids in like, you know, college have read on the subject. And like, he seems to have read loads of stuff. He knows more about it than the teacher teaching it, and... You know, that's weird for like a seven year old. He's weirdly clever. Because there was books around in my house and I would just pick stuff up, but a lot of it was like really weird, like not aimed at children stuff. Like it would be like adult kind of historical stuff or like the Encyclopedia Britannica for some fucking reason. And like, you know, I just pick stuff up going, oh, yeah, I'll read this. And like, um, I was interested, like some kids are, in ancient Egypt, so I read everything I could find, including adult texts on, like, this subject. And, like, same with dinosaurs, and then a little bit of space, so that I really just grew a huge phobia in adulthood of the void of space and deep ocean. Oh, I got hit by a train. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that kind of caused uh, me to lose interest in that, but, like, they were like, if he, if we try and make him do anything he's not interested in, he will refuse. Like, he will straight up not know anything, but also just refuse to even try to learn. Like, I was okay at maths, but the moment maths got hard, I just went, oh, okay, I'm gonna guess. And then they were like, you're getting it wrong. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, it's just like, uh, and I used to just be like that all the time. These guys are from the sewer levels of Crash 2, but it's a little slightly better. Um, yeah, and it's like, I have like a ridiculous, like, to this day I still have this thing where I get really obsessed over something, and then I will learn everything about it, but if it's like something I don't give a shit about, I will just know nothing about it. Perfect execution! <laughs> she says being hit by train. Um, yeah, so, um, they basically said, we're not sure if your kid is gifted or if he has special needs of some kind, and they actually put me in both groups. They put me in the top group, and then they also took me to one side for remedial lessons, because they were like, 
your kid is really intelligent, but like for him to pass primary school, we're gonna have to make him have special projects because he refuses to engage on certain things and he's gonna fail the year. <laughs> they were like at this point where they were like making like, oh, there's a loophole here. If we make him do a presentation on something and show it to the people, they'll realize that he's like way more capable. And I made a whole poster uh, about dinosaurs and certain like eras of when these dinosaurs were like around, you know? And they passed me and I got into a really good secondary school, one of the best secondary schools in the area because I, they were just like, he's really intelligent, but he's also a dumbass. Because <laughs> it's like, you know, and like you're getting told this and the worst thing, like it would have been better if they just kept it to, he's really stupid, you know, because uh, or like not that rude, like he's really just like, he has a learning difficulty. Than if they told me I'm gifted, because everyone who's ever been told they're gifted becomes an underachiever after a while, because they're just used to not having to try and go, oh, well, I'm gifted, so I'll just get through it. And I already had that habit running. You could see it from my, like, behavioral pattern, where if anything was even slightly hard, I didn't know how to learn it. Like, I didn't know how to build knowledge. I just, oh, I get this, so it's fine. Oh, I don't get this? I won't try and understand. I just... Um, okay, never mind, moving on. And that really fucked me up. I basically, lucky I got into a university, um, <laughs> dropped out of, uh, uh, dropped out of one master's degree because I was like, technically speaking, I can do this, but I was starting to lose interest because my girlfriend left me around this time and it really fucked me up. So my head was not in the game, so I just failed everything. Because like, I couldn't, I couldn't focus. Like I have like a real bad focusing issue when it stuff outside of this is affecting me. And um, yeah, it's like really like fucked up a lot of stuff. Um, but when it comes to education, I have to be applied to it. If I don't care. I, like and it puts me off like, paying for other like uh, tuition now. Because obviously, when you get adulthood, you have to pay for things. Because it's like I want to do this. But if I lose interest, or I find it even slightly too difficult, I will probably fail it and just go, oh, fuck, you know, like, so, especially in my current, um, job profession, because I don't, didn't really want to be a teacher, and, uh, I'm a teacher now, so, yeah, I can't do a master's degree in education, I'd have to do a master's degree in something I give a shit about, which is, like, language itself and linguistics. Yeah, like, never tell a kid, no matter how, no matter if you think that they're, like, clever or not, no matter if you think they're paying attention, don't ever tell them that they're intellectual, because they just go, oh, okay, I can sit back for the rest of my life now, it'll be handled for me, great. Three degrees for me, going to be a doctor at the end. I'm clever, because the way kids conceptualize cleverness is um, Perfect execution. that it's just the means and the end. Kids conceptualize intelligence as, because they see it in the cartoon, there's a, the brainy kid with the glasses and the ginger hair and like Miss Frizz's magic school bus or whatever. Um, probably not, but you know, I've only ever watched that twice. And they just think, there's an intelligent person in every situation, uh, like the Velma of the Scooby-Doo and stuff. And that means that you are just permanently at perfection. But it's like, it's not how that works. Like, intelligence just means that you're better at grasping certain concepts, and there's different kinds of intelligence. And, um... It just means that it's easier for you to get through the process of learning once you learn the tools how to do it. And because of the uh, situation I was living in, I was abandoned a lot of the time to just try and work out life skills on my own, which meant, of course, I had to be very good at picking stuff up from seeing it twice, done by an adult, and then be told, why the fuck can't you do that? You know, so, like, it meant that, like, a lot of people mistook me for having, like, dexterity issues and things and it was actually just like um, I was never a lot of the time like when I was because we moved around a lot as well um, 
when I was at kindergarten and stuff, <laughs> I wasn't getting enough time to learn like fine and gross motor skills. So I was just like, I don't know how to catch a ball or ride a bicycle. And I had to teach this stuff to myself. And then I, like, there was a situation where I rode a bike, didn't ride a bike for two years, and had to relearn how to ride a bicycle. Because I completely forgot. And it's like, you know, nowadays I know how I learn, and I know how to force myself into learning things, even if I don't want to learn them long term. Uh, or I just have no interest in them. But it's like, no one could get through, for, through to me at a young age. Um, <clears throat> Freedom races and I'm still talking about this one picture. Uh oh shit. No. Oh. I'm talking about a lot of dark past shit lately, haven't I? Uh this lady's pissing me off. I didn't realise how annoying she was. <laughs> Every five minutes she's like vroom vroom. It's like, okay, we get it. The most annoying character in this game though by far for me was Yaya Panda. Because I was like, who's char what is this character? I'll play her. I played her once and went for a cup and I was like, oh my god, she's so annoying. Cause she's just screaming all the time for some reason. And it's just like, is this the character? That's a wiki though, because I had no idea who the hell the guy got found in. I call her hardcore on this kind of game. Yeah, let's talk about something more positive. Uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I was watching, like, a lot of stuff, like, um, yeah, like, I, I feel like the reason that I have, like, a warped learning curve as well was I was just shoved in front of TV screens a lot of the time because, like, my parents didn't know what to do with me. I was in the scouts and tried to do the best I was to try and make me, like, a rounded individual. Um, if anyone has been in the Boy Scouts, that does not make you a rounded individual. <laughs> like, you know, um, you learn skills that only a serial killer would really need to know. How to build a shelter in the forest, how to dig a trench, <laughs> like, um, how to tie knots that will never give, and it's just like, okay, this is like... Uh, yeah, this is like, unhealthy. <laughs> Perfect execution. Maybe I shouldn't have chosen it twice. <laughs> anyway, like, uh, yeah, so like that, that was a weird part of my life. Um, I was really fat as a kid, like, but then I lost all my weight when I hit puberty. And a lot of people don't realize this because a lot of my friends are from when I was thin. And, um, when I, you know, and I didn't, I kind of drifted away from my primary school friends, and, um, yeah. So, like, some people are, like, some people I would meet in bars at uni, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, you're that, and I was like, oh, I thought it was you, and he's like, I didn't recognize you, because you're not fat anymore, and everyone around me would just start bursting out laughing, and be like, what, he used to be fat, and they're like, yeah, he was a huge guy. <laughs> yeah. And they used to think it's hilarious, and I was like, really, that's a piece of humor to you guys? <laughs> Man. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I kind of lost weight really quickly. Uh, yeah, I used to watch, like, because I was shoved in front of TV screens a lot, I used to watch a lot of Looney Tunes. Uh, I played a lot of video games in PC, and uh, this kind of games like this. And, um, I was kind of, uh, watched a lot of He-Man, and He-Man is really strange. And, like, everyone's always like, oh, it's really homoerotic, and it's like, I don't really, oh, I got that short card. <laughs> cool. Uh, 
it, it's just everyone, no one references it, there's no kind of like, flirtation in the universe, so it's not really homoerotic, it's just everyone is drawn, ripped as fuck, and all of the girls are drawn in a way where it's like clear that they're not the center of attention, you know what I mean? Like, you know, if it was like a Marvel thing, like, the girl would be in like a full tight bodysuit, but like, the only people who were indecently dressed were the men, and I think that's where a lot of people got that. And not even all the men, really just B-Man and Skeletor, and maybe Beastman, but we don't talk about Beastman, so he's quite... I used to think Skeletor was quite scary as a kid, then I uh, watched it for a bit and thought it was actually quite funny. Like G.I. Joe, lot of really, like... Are you really telling the kids already at this age? Stop. Like there was a there's a whole it's not even like a GI Joe knowing his half of the battle kind of thing. Where it's just like in between breaks or like Sonic thing. Hey kids, don't let your weird ass fucking relatives touch you inappropriately. Which was literally not how he said that, but like you know, um, it wasn't anything like that. Or like it, there was a whole episode in which this lady wanted to be as strong as he man. And this shady ass guy was just being allowed in the royal garden, selling her magic potions that made her feel stronger, but then made her addicted to the magic potion. And they were like, "Hey kids, don't accept strange chemicals from like total strangers, and like they could be bad and have bad after effects." I was like, "Is this like this is the weirdest anti?" drug message I've ever seen in universe. Also, isn't it more of a steroids reference? And you're thinking, He-Man of all people walking around and go, hey kids, don't do steroids. It's like, um, <laughs> like, are you sure you, <laughs> pretty sure Skeletor and you have been hitting the juice? <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah. Hey kids, don't do steroids. Uh, He-Man, you can't look that good. Also, He-Man had the worst alter ego ever, because he, di he didn't cover his face. He was like, as Prince Adam, or, yeah, Prince Adam, is it, of Eternia? He was just He-Man with a shirt on. And then, like, his power was to just strip. And everyone was, and his cat to turn into Battle Cat where he just stopped being a coward for five seconds. <laughs> and he was still not great. Um, even when he was turned into Battle Cat. And like, how did no one work that out? Oh, thank God He-Man's here. Where's Prince Adam gone? He's literally just naked Prince Adam. How have you not worked this out? <laughs> Feels bad. 